Whoop to motherfucking whoop, guys. You already know what's going on with Chaglette, and that means that, again, it is Friday. Um, and, again, it is a late Friday. Um, I have been working on the final touches of getting the house together and getting our bags packed and everything ready for um, Tuesday. Um, I know I've mentioned this a lot, but for you guys that don't know, um, my daughter is having a double hip reduction surgery on Tuesday, uh, for hip dysplasia. Um, so anybody that, you know, cares and wants to keep her in your thoughts or whatever, that's great. Thanks. Much appreciated. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, uh, this week's topic was about stigmas. And I was actually talking with my husband about this at one point. And um, when we first got together, um, he knew I was a juggalette. And uh, he was, you know, he was remembering, you know, all the stereotypes that he had heard about us. And I said that this topic of the week was about stigmas. And he said, aren't they the same thing? And in all reality, no. Stigma and stereotype are not the same thing. Because in a stereotype, a stereotype can have a good good thing. And um, in a stigma, they're never good. They're always bad. They're, yeah. And unfortunately, we do have a lot of those. Um, one of the biggest ones has been repeatedly said throughout the week. And that was the no job, uh, scrubby, um... Yada, yada, yada. And there is a lot of those. There are a lot of juggalos, unfortunately, that give us a bad name that, you know, are, are uh, constantly getting put on government help and everything like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, government help when it's needed. Um, but I've noticed a lot of the juggalos that I know in my area or that used to be in my area, um, a lot of them are on government help. Um, I know some juggalos that are not very good parents. Um, and once again, that's a really bad stigma. That's not always true. Um, I know that myself and crazy McCormick and, um, nightmare are very passionate parents. Um, I am one of the meanest mama bears you will ever meet, like very bad. <laughs> so, um, I went off on a lady, um, at a store one time because she called my kid a little brat and, uh, I made her completely leave her cart and leave the store. Um, when it comes to my children, you don't fuck with them, but, um, Anyways, um, like I know I juggle at that and I'm not, I never was friends with this person cause I couldn't stand her and everything that she stood for, but she was, uh, she's a juggle at and she has four children and one on the way and they're all by different fathers. Um, and none of them pay child support and she's constantly couch hopping. Um, and she, she still has her kids and that I don't understand. Um, but yeah, that's one of the major stigmas. I mean, I'm, I'm a stay at home mom. Um, I am very blessed to be a stay at home mom and it's not by choice. My husband, well, it is by choice, but it isn't. I don't mind going to work. I actually like going to work. Uh, the job that I worked at for several years, um, I actually really enjoyed, um, unlike everybody on this, on this, uh, channel seeming to think that nobody likes work. I don't mind it. Um, I loved my regulars. Um, I loved my coworkers. Uh, so I mean, work wasn't that difficult for me. Um, it was, uh, more my boss that I had some troubles with towards the end. Um, but my husband works 80 hours a week, so I don't have to, and I can stay home with the kids. And even then, being a mom, a stay-at-home mom and wife, is not a walk in the park. Um, I do the cooking, cleaning, I take care of the kids, I take care of my husband, and I do all the bills 
and you know it, it's it's a big job um unlike unlike a job that ends mine never does um I stay up all hours of the night, I stay up all hours of the day, I'll go easily without sleep and, and to take care of my kids and my husband. And that's my job. And I'm okay with that. I enjoy my job. Um, but before that, um, this once again goes in with, you know, parents and parenthood and stuff like that. Um, when I was a single mother of just one and I didn't have a uh, other parent helping me financially, um, they, um, I would work 80 and 90 hours a week. Uh, I would work at my original job and then I would either, I would, on some days, I would work from my regular job from 6 in the morning until 4.30. And then I would grab food and change on the way to work. And I would be a dishwasher from 5 o'clock until 11 o'clock at night. And then I would go home, go to bed, and do it all over again. Because I couldn't afford to be able to financially stable myself alone. So, I did what I had to do in order to take care of my child. Um... But another one of our stigmas is that we're very violent. Um, and, and it doesn't matter if there's a meaning behind our music or not. That's not what the media is going to see. That's not what any negative person is going to want to see. You know, we're actually being mean to the people that are bad. We're doing bad things to the bad people. And it doesn't matter. If, if they're talking about killing and murder and, and weapons and everything like that, we're a problem and that's what makes us that's what makes the media hate us so much that's what puts us as a gang label is the fact that we're violent i mean and there are some like mcintosh said you know in every bushel of apples there's going to be a bad one but we've got some nasty fucking oranges in ours and those are the people that give us such a bad name we uh, a majority of us know about the story of Psycho Sam, and that was one of the major ones that put Juggalos on the map as violent murderers. And um, if for you guys that don't know the story of Psycho Sam, he killed his girlfriend, one of her friends, and her parents with a ball-peen hammer. Um, and, but... And then there's countless of other ones. I mean, we all know the Tila Tequila incident. I mean, but what the media doesn't want to cover is the fact that Tila started, you know, making it worse and egging them on and egging them on. I mean, of course, it wasn't it wasn't necessarily smart for the people to do what they were doing, you know, throwing fucking literally shit at her and throwing rocks and everything else at her. I mean, that's what makes us, you know, the image of us violent. But... It's also the it's also what the media doesn't see is that Tila kind of instigated it as well. I mean, she could have just ran off the stage and been done with it, but instead she stayed on and you know trying to show everybody her tits and you know making fun of everybody and for what fucking reason she was even there we can only ask ICP, but you know anyways, and then I mean there's the other things that were like were druggies um and uh, there's a lot of them that are especially in the area that i grew up in there's a lot of druggies um there's been a lot of overdoses and people that were in my clique i guess you could call it i mean i didn't really talk to them but they were in the kind of clique that i was in in high school and uh they a lot of them died of overdoses of heroin and and things like that and they were druggies and there's the druggy stigma, and then there's also the fact that juggalettes are sluts, to put it very frankly. And, I mean, there's a lot of women that I know that are far beyond the term, or far beyond the term slut. I mean, I don't necessarily like the term slut because I, I don't necessarily completely believe in slut shaming. Um, but, uh, you know... Juggalettes are all bad and nasty and shit like that, but, and I, I was called kind of, you know, I was called slutty in high school, but then there was the cheerleaders 
who at my school, there they actually made the news that there was a that our cheerleading squad got off every single fucking foot play, football player every fucking game. So and and then it went on to the basketball players until it stopped because media caught wind of it. Um, yeah, that was my high school. But yet, people like us are the slutty ones. I am okay with my body. I understand what I am, and I'm okay with that. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with a woman being confident in themselves. And, you know, I think that being a juggalette kind of helps with that. I mean, it gives you, like it does with all the other, you know, juggalos and juggalettes alike, it gives you the mentality of... You know, well, I'm allowed to be who I am. I'm comfortable in my own skin because of the people around me, because of the music that I listen to. It makes me realize that, you know what? I can be whatever the fuck I want, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with being the outcast. I'm okay with people talking shit about me because as long as I am who I am and I'm okay with who I am, the world's okay. I mean, in the words of RuPaul, and a lot of people probably don't, really care about who that is. But what other people think of me is none of my business. People can talk shit all they want. People can say anything they want. People can give all of the negativity that they want and say all the negative stig stigmas that there is. But what we feel about ourselves and what we put ourselves as and how we make ourselves out to be is the most important part. So stigma or not, I am who I am and you guys are too. So just don't murder anybody. We'll be gravy. So, anyways, I did a lot of rambling and this video is 12 minutes long. But anyways, I'm going to get going because uh, I got some shits to do. Um, I've got to finish packing up some more stuff. And uh, yeah, so it's probably going to take a while for this video to load. So, much motherfucking wicked clown love, guys. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, um, sub or give us a like on Facebook and I believe that we're going to be doing a Sunday hangout maybe. I don't know. Crazy McCormick. You'd have to tell everybody that. So anyways, uh, much motherfucking like a clown love and don't forget, always keep it wicked. Later guys.